Happy New Year, woodworkers. That brings me to my next project. You see that PVC there in the corner? Yeah, well, during Christmas, that froze and it broke, so we had to replace it. And up in the corner broke, so we had to replace that. So that brings me to my next project, and that is insulating my shop. Well, that's a big project. So I can't do it all at one time. So I'm going to do it one paycheck at a time. Now, first we have to get everything cleaned out. Anybody have keys they don't know what goes to? Yeah, well, that's those. They've been hanging by that door for about six years now. You see the rust? I got rust on my table saw and some terrible rust on my joiner. When that pipe popped, it put a lot of moisture into my shop. So, what I'm going to do in this video is I have a little bit of insulation left over from my dad's tiny house. These boards I'm using, I found at work. These are about 5 8 thick and about almost six inches wide but they're twisted I cannot use them for the dresser and they got a lot of sap wood in them making them very very brittle so I throw them up in the rack because I can't use them on the dresser wondering what I was going to use them for well since that pipe burst I thought, well, it's a good time to insulate my shop and see about putting a different kind of heater in here for next winter. Can't do anything for this winter, but next winter will be better. Now, I don't really need these boards to be square, but I do want the edges straight because they're going to meet up against each other. So, I'm going to joint them and run them through the table saw. Since I'm going to be doing this every two weeks, I need to cut these boards on the table saw to make sure I can use any kind of pallet. These boards are six inches wide and about four feet long. So I'm not going to be able to find these size boards all the time. I need to make sure that any pallet I find will fit. So I'm going to rip them on the table saw at four inches three inches, inch and a quarter, and two and a quarter inches. I've already ran them through the planer and brought them down to about a half an inch. Most pallet boards are above a half inch in thickness and that will allow me to not be so picky when choosing pallets. Since this is such a large project, I've been putting it off for a long time. I didn't have the money to buy the insulation all at once. I didn't have the room to store all the pallet boards and be able to cut them all at once. So I've just been kind of putting it off. Well, I can't ignore this elephant anymore. I have to start taking it out piece by piece. And at $50 a paycheck every two weeks, I should be able to knock it out. That gives me around a $1,500 budget for the year. And I feel like that's probably going to be enough money to get all the insulation I need. I think the issue will be the pallet boards themselves. So here I square up one side and I'm using a stop block so I can cut them all to size. I'm only going to be doing one part of the wall in this video. And you can check out the rest as I go along through the year. You'll see my shop start to transform. I'll do a video toward the end of the year and you can see the total transformation but for now we're just going to do the one part of this wall. At this point I have no plans on leaving my shop anytime soon so that means I'm going to have to stare at these walls for a very long time. So I decided I was going to put a quarter inch round over on all of these boards. I don't know if it's necessary. But I like the way this quarter inch roundover looks on the boards when they come together. I think it gives it like a beadboard look. But, you know, some people don't like the beadboard look. So you don't have to put the quarter inch round over on it if you want. So I start at the bottom making sure my first board is level and square. 
because all the other boards are going to reference off of that one board. Now, leaving an account that I plan on taking this door out, I do leave a gap because I'm planning on replacing this door with a new door. This door came on my dad's shed when it came, and I put it in here because we put a full exterior door on the shed so that it would seal it up real nice. I plan to do the same thing here. But for now, you know, this door's got to stay. Now, I had talked about how these boards were twisted earlier, and the only way to pull them flat is to screw them to something. That's what makes them perfect for this project because I can put one screw in each stud and that will pull the board particularly flat. Which is another reason why I don't have to be particularly particular about any of the other pallets I choose. They can all be crappy boards and I can surface one side and not have to worry about the other side and just screw them straight to the wall which will pull them all nice and flat. To save my knees and back a little bit, I pre-drilled all the holes on the ends over on my workbench. And then I countersank the screws in about three sets of boards and I would bring them over and screw them to the wall. Then once I had the two ends drilled, I would pilot hole and screw the center to the center stud. Doing it this way saved me some measuring and saved me some sanity from having to measure every single board. After a couple of sets of boards, I kind of got into a rhythm and everything started going pretty fast. As I would put the boards on, I would occasionally check for square and make sure that I wasn't getting out of line. And it started to look like a pretty nice wall. Now you can see the outlets and the light switches come up. Now to cut those out I used a pull saw and a multi-tool. By multi-tool I mean it's a Dremel oscillating tool. If you don't have one of these you might want to get one. I don't use it very often but man when I need it it's there and I could not have done this project as easily without it. As a matter of fact, it was so cold when we went to do the PVC that the normal PVC cutter I use was actually breaking the PVC itself. So I had to use that oscillating tool to cut the PVC and it left a nice clean cut. As to where the other one, it, it would crack. I mean, it was terrible. It was so cold out that day. As I start to get to the top of this wall, I'm getting pretty excited. This, this is looking very cool. I mean, I'm just loving the way this wall looks. It's making me very excited on how good my shop is going to look by the end of the year. I can't wait to have it all done. It really kind of makes me sad that I haven't started doing this a long time ago. I mean, I've been putting it off so long and just looking at it, it looks so good I could have had it done already if I'd have just not procrastinated and done it one paycheck at a time. I mean $50 a paycheck every two weeks it really isn't that much. So that's going to do it for today. I decided to put a four prong in here instead of a uh, two prong so I'd take all these back off which is why I use screws and not nails. I don't figure that's the last time I'm going to see the inside of this wall. I got this one all done. I got to do this side yet. And I got to build a door. So I have access to all this over here. So I'm going to go ahead and get started on that. If y'all want to see this completed, subscribe. It's going to be a few months. But uh, you know what? Go ahead and subscribe anyway. And you can watch it happen. But... When I get it all done, we'll do a uh, before and after video. All right, I'll see y'all later.